Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show that stretches you beyond your five senses. When you are looking for your next step on the path into the unseen, we've got you covered. Join epic adventure seekers and level up your game with your host, reality magician, Allie Bierman. Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, connecting heart and mind. If you've not yet done so, please go ahead and rate and review the show. And it's really easy to do that on the website is the easiest, unless you're on your phone, or you scroll down and do it. But on the website, let's get metaphysicalshow.com. You scroll down and where all the series of buttons are for listening, one of them says leave a review. So it only takes a few minutes. Write a sentence or two about what you like about the show and what you think somebody else might like. And please also share with at least one friend this week. Now, today, I'm continuing the discussion of how to be happy, because after all, you're here to live in love and happiness, and they go together because one allows the other to be present in your life. But before I jump into that, I have a special new gift for you today because it's going to tie in with the tools that I'm sharing with you today. And you see, affirmations work 100% of the time. However, a lot of people think they don't work, and that's because they don't know how to say them. And yes, I have a whole audio and written stuff for you, but I decided to make a shortcut with the highlights so you could start on that right away. Today, it's a quick guide to affirmations, and you can find a link for that in the show notes. Now, today I'm sharing some tools that I've been using myself for many years. I know they work. In fact, almost everything I share with you here in my blog, in my articles, in my videos, in my audios, in my books. I'm sharing stuff that worked because I always take what works for me and then I use it to assist other people. And that's why I'm sharing it here with you today. Now, we know life doesn't always go smoothly. Bad things happen in everybody's life. So it's important to know how to apply tools so that you can move yourself out of a hurting place and into feeling better. So my first tool is, well, let me ask you a quick question here. Do you have a to-do list? Lots of people have a to-do list. The thing about a to-do list is, how do you feel when you don't get to finish everything on it? Kind of discouraged. You might even be kind of upset with yourself. And even if you do a whole lot of stuff on the list each day, a whole bunch more gets added, doesn't it? So instead of a to-do list, what if you had a to-be list? If you want your life to look different than the way it does, then you got to be different in the world from the way you're being now. So a to-be list would mean writing down who you want to be, who does the kind of thinking that leads to the kind of actions that will allow you to have something you've never had before. So it's be, do, have. Be someone you've never been, who thinks thoughts you've never thought, who takes actions you've never taken. That what you have, what you've never had. Pretty simple, don't you think? Okay, the second major tool that I want to share with you today. Oh, and by the way, it's very simple to do that uh, to be list. Second tool, it's another question for you. Do you keep a journal? Many people keep more than one journal, and there are lots of different kinds. This one in particular 
chances are you never even heard of it, so you don't have one. I have a routine. I have a morning routine. I have a nighttime routine. The first thing I do in my nighttime routine is I write one thing in my uh, love me journal. So it's things I love about being me. So I'm not going to go look over my day and say, oh, I could have done that better. Why did I say that instead of this? Why didn't I take that action when my gut was telling me to? That's not going to serve you, not in any way, shape, or form. So instead, in the journal, you write one thing that you love about being you. Now, for me, what's very current for me is I love that I'm somebody who never gives up. Truth is, this is the fifth time, five times I've recorded this episode for you because I kept having technical difficulties. I never give up. And that's one thing I love about being me. If I wasn't somebody who doesn't give up when that person attacked me, she would have killed me. And the brain injury was so bad. It was so hard to go on after that. If I gave up, I probably wouldn't be here for that either. So it's really important to me to never give up on anything that's important to me. So I'll write that one thing that I don't write a whole story. I write one short sentence, a few words. So number one, I never give up. And then... The next day, it'll be number two, and then number three. And each day when you add your new, what you love about you, you go back and you read aloud. It's always important to speak all these things aloud. I get a little bit excited, (laughs) jumping up and down here. When you speak them aloud, you're using more of your body senses. So you're hearing, you're looking at, you're seeing you're speaking, and you've probably got some feeling stuff going on inside. So you're reading that one aloud, and you're reading all the others that you've written to date. Now, right now, I'm approaching day 700. And once I passed 600, I found it really took me a long time to read through those 600 items And when I start my nighttime routine, I'm already sleepy. So it's a little bit of a struggle to stay awake. So once I passed 600, I went from reading my entire list every day to I'll randomly choose a page or two or three, and I'll read everything on those pages. But what do you think that does for me? When I'm starting my nighttime routine, it brings me to a very peaceful, happy place to move forward, getting ready for a peaceful night. Now, I'm going to take a quick sponsor break here, because one thing I love about me is I love to learn new things. It's kind of an addiction for me. It's when I have friends taking classes, at one point I had to say, stop telling me about them because then I'll have to take them, because I'm interested in everything. So the sponsor of this show, of this episode today, is Audible. And why do I love Audible? I've been a member for seven years, and what they're offering to you is a free 30-day trial. You get to choose a book, download it. Oh, and they have a gazillion books there. It's an audio book and you have 30 days to look around it's a phenomenal site i can't believe how much they offer i have a huge library from them and i get to experience not just my book of choice that month but a whole bunch of others included in my membership so you go on over to audibletrial.com forward slash a l i T-L-C, and that link also will be in the show notes. Now, next thing for which I feel very happy and grateful is the words I just spoke. 
I've been doing this for many, 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 25 years. So first thing every morning, I have a whole routine I do where I do a lot of gratitude for the universe and my guides, my angels and the people in my world. And then I do blessings for people in my world, people who are on my healing list. And then I do some meditation just to see what the universe wants me to know. Yeah, it takes me a long time to do all this. When I then get up, I write a list. I speak it out loud, a list of 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful right then. What do you think happens when I do that? It's setting the energy for the day. It's a feel-good, happy, successful energy. And that's how I'm feeling. And the universe always manifests for you the messages that come to it with feeling, not just words, not just thoughts, but feelings, emotions. So when I'm making this list, I notice this right away. The universe gives you more and more and more things for which to feel happy and grateful every single day. In fact, you become accustomed to the fact that they're coming at you almost nonstop, and you see them. You see them everywhere. I mean, something as simple as if I go into a library and I think I want this certain book title and without paying attention, and sometimes that happens, but there's a reason for that. I'll grab the book next to the one I thought I was grabbing. I get home and oh, I look at it to read it. So, oh, that's not the book that I was after, except I'll open it to a page where it has the message that I needed for that day. So there are no accidents. That's the universe giving me something for which to feel happy and grateful. Now, I do 10 things. If you've never done this before, do two or three. Just start and notice. And remember, speak it out loud. Notice how you feel. And when you feel happy and grateful, you're also probably going to feel content and calm. And that's the energy that's filling you and going out in your energy field to start your day. You think that makes a difference in how you spend your day in who and what you attract to you when you have positive, calming energy going out. The other time I do a happy and grateful list is before I go to sleep. So the first thing I do is that I love me journal entry and the reading them. And then I do another list of 10 things for which I feel happy and grateful that day. Now that's setting my mind in a place of relaxation and peace and happiness to go to sleep. Now, what do you expect that's doing for my nighttime sleeping? I highly recommend the morning list and the nighttime list. Even if you just have two or three things on the list. And there's one other time I do a happy and grateful list that I'm not writing it down. If something comes into my world during the day and my immediate, rather than having a response, I might actually have a reaction. Though I don't let my reactions last more than a few seconds. If I feel frustrated or angry or annoyed, and I know darn well that's my interpretation of what's going on because nobody and nothing out there can ever make me happy or sad or angry or frustrated or annoyed. I have to interpret what they're doing in a way that my body, mind, spirit says, little. And why would I do that? So instead, right in that moment, as soon as I notice I'm feeling less than happy, I was 10 things 
for which I feel happy and grateful, and I'll just rattle them off right there. And then what does that do? It takes my mind completely off the crummy place it was a moment ago, and I don't have to go back there. It's gone. Now, the next thing, the next tool, it's a really simple one. It's smile. See, when you smile, a real smile, you smile with your whole face. If you're watching, the corners of my mouth go up, my cheeks go up, my eyes open wide, and my eyebrows kind of go up. You know, even... In the periods when people were wearing masks, you could always tell when somebody was smiling behind that mask. When you smile, go ahead and do it right now while I'm talking to you. Notice how you're feeling. The first thing that I notice when I smile and when I'm working with somebody, they smile, is they straighten up. They'll stand taller. They'll sit taller. Well, what happens when you have a straighter posture? Your lungs have room to expand, and you're inhaling life force. But here's the thing you may not be aware of. You don't just breathe in through your lung system. They're only your second largest organ. Your largest organ is your skin. And you breathe in through your skin, right to your heart. Oh, man, you're going to feel a powerful lift in your energy, a wonderful welcome, calm, and peace. And just from smiling, you know, kind of combining a to-be list with the smile I just talked to you about. For a long time, I admired people who smiled all the time. And I would regretfully think, gee, I wish I was somebody who smiled all the time. And then one day I was like, oh, like slap my head, right? I am somebody who smiles all the time. When I decide to be, and that's what I decided to be, when I had that awakening moment. And... It became a habit very quickly, very easily. And I've been doing it for so many years. <laughs> I wake up in the morning smiling. I go to sleep, the lights are out, I'm smiling. The smile feels so good sometimes. Well, often I'll sing or hum. And once in a while, even a little dance. And it's just because I'm smiling and I feel good. And here's something really cool. When you smile at other people, well, you know a laugh is contagious, right? So is a smile. Most people will smile back at you. Now, to do that, they have to look you in the eye. Not all cultures do that. And sometimes you might be going by somebody who's got something weighing heavily on their mind, and they might not look at you, and they might not even see you when you're walking by them. Oh, but the people who do see you, they smile back. I was walking down a sidewalk going from one store to another and a person driving by looking for a place to park looked over at me and gave me such a big smile. It just, it fills my heart. It makes me feel even better than I did before. And here's something that really fills my heart. I was in New York City one day and by the way, I'm a native New Yorker, not from the city, but I live in New York and I grew up in New York. And all that stereotypical stuff about how not nice New Yorkers are and unfriendly, none of that's true. They're super friendly. They're super helpful. You need directions, they'll offer you directions. I was walking down the sidewalk once, and I was wearing one of my grandchildren when she was a itchy baby. And somebody looked out her window and said, I have a stroller I don't use anymore. Do you want it? Things like that happen in New York because people are nice. So I was walking down the sidewalk one day and I was approaching an older gentleman and there was something heavy going on in his life because he looked really miserable. I don't know if he was hurting physically or emotionally. I don't know. And it doesn't matter. And I was approaching and approaching and smiling just because I smile. And 
I was getting closer and closer and he wasn't smiling, but he did look up at me. And as I came very close to him, he looked into my eyes and he smiled. And I, I still have that picture in me. And I get pretty emotional when things touch me. Now, I don't think I made his day or his week, but in that moment, he felt better. So smiling is a really, really helpful thing to do, and it makes you feel good besides. Now, remember to pick up that gift that I made for you on affirmations, because when you know how to say affirmations and you're able to bring into your world the things you really want, instead of the things you just say you want, because you don't know how to ask. The link is in the show notes for your gift, also in the show notes. Remember to join our Facebook group. Leave a review on our website. I wish you a day filled with many, many blessings. And remember, all that happens in the world happens inside you so your joy is an inner job and i wish you to n i n capital j o y today you've been listening to a talk on the wilder side thanks for tuning in to let's get metaphysical Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every Monday for more exciting insights and wisdom on life beyond your five senses. Until next time, take a small step in a new direction. Start now.